and install. Thank you, Julie. Morning. And welcome to the very first of our Imperial Day webinars entitled The Value of Clean. My name is Jim White, and I lead a solution based selling organization for Imperial Dade in the North Central region. And we are thrilled to have you attend today's session. Let's face it keeping our facilities clean, safe, and healthy is costly and labor intensive. But what if we approach cleaning as a key component to enhancing your brand and overall profitability and to achieve desired results while managing costs? I'm confident this series will afford you the opportunity to do just that. Our first webinar will cover why we clean. But before we begin, let's cover a couple of housekeeping rules. We have a full crowd today, so for the benefit of all attending, please make sure that to mute yourself. Throughout the session, please use the chat feature to type in your questions. These will be answered during our Q&A segment at the end of the presentation. If you would like to ask a question directly, please use the raise hand feature and we will get to the question during the Q&A. I would also like to thank today's vendor sponsor, Gojo Purell, for their support of this series. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Bill McGarvey, Imperial Dade's Director of Training and Sustainability. Bill will introduce your presenters and add a little more insight to today's content. So sit back, enjoy the webinar, and on behalf of all of us here, thank you for choosing Imperial Dade. Well, thank you, Jim. Good morning, everyone. As Jim said, I'm Bill McGarvey, Director of Training and Sustainability for Imperial Dade. I'm honored to be here today for the launch of our webinar series, The Value of Clean. Today's webinar, Why We Clean, will not only be informative and hopefully answer your questions, but it also serves to demonstrate the com compounded strength of Imperial Dade. Your presenters today represent several legacy organizations that have come together under the Imperial Date umbrella. And this webinar is just one way that we can bring what I like to call our national presence with hometown flavor to you, our customers. You've already met Jim White, and now please let me introduce our other speakers today. Toward the end of our, the webinar, we'll hear from Frank Fowler, Director of Jan Sand Sales in Cincinnati. But our two main speakers today actually have a combined experience in the industry of almost as long as I have been alive. <laughs> we have uh, coming up will be Glenn Huizenga. Uh, he's our senior sales leader for Western Michigan in Elkhart, Indiana. But starting us off today will be Bob Mercury, senior sales leader from Cleveland and also a part of the Imperial Dade Cleaning Institute network of credentialed trainers. So thank you again for joining us. And without further ado, take it away, Bob. Thank you, Bill. Good morning, everyone. Starting off, um, thanks for attending our seminar. Um, and first question, why is cleaning needed? Truthfully, enough cannot be said about the importance of cleaning and how it affects our physical and mental welfare. Keeping in mind that the average individual spends approximately 90% of their life indoors. Important fact. Cleaning plays a major role in not only keeping us safe, but also keeping us at work, at school, and can also help to drive profitability in our businesses. So let's take a look at some of the reasons we clean and some of the benefits that are associated with them. When you ask people why we clean, probably the first thing that's gonna to come to mind is for health. One of the most important factors. You know, cleaning's important because microbes, germs, cannot survive in the presence of dirt. So keeping a clean surface is going to help to prohibit the growth of germs and microbes in our, ability, in our buildings. Also, from an indoor air quality standpoint, keeping dust, keeping the air clean, keeping carpet clean, stopping the dust and the contaminants that, that we're breathing when we're in our buildings, it affects everyone especially the most vulnerable, children, elderly, those with underlying health conditions such as asthma, 
and even heart disease can have problems with indoor air quality. Next one is appearance. We've all got some egos. We're all very proud of the work we do. We work very hard to keep our buildings clean. And perceptions are reality. For our guests, that first impression creates a lasting impression of what we do and how we clean. We're trying to boost our facility's image. We want people to feel good about visiting us in the workplace. We want people to feel good about shopping in our stores or eating at their restaurants. Appearance is very important in elevating our, our space and it, it plays a vital role in the cleanliness of our facility. Something that you know definitely needs to be addressed is post pandemic. While we're back to somewhat normal, I feel, I do think that the pandemic raised some standards, um, expectations of cleanliness in our building and what was being done. Uh, disinfecting, specifically disinfecting and, and better cleaning standards. Um, while I think that we are back to a base level, I, I do think that those expectations are still there by the people that eat in our restaurants, shop in our stores, visit our offices. You know, they still expect a, a certain level of cleanliness to be there. Another great reason to clean is safeguarding our investments. Here's one that affects the pocketbooks, right? We have um, asset protection, keeping our furniture um, in, in great condition so it lasts longer, uh, having a solid floor care program that maintains our floor over time with a proactive approach, extending the life cycle of our carpeting or extending the life cycle of our hard floors, uh, reducing labor costs to equipment that we may have. Cleaning will help with that and also business appeal. You know, for those in the rental market, renting office space, uh, having a, a clean uh, property is going to help bring in tenants and uh, hopefully get you a higher price for doing that. When we talk about cleaning, something that often comes or gets easily confused is the difference between cleaning and disinfecting. I see that a lot when I'm out making sales calls or when I'm training customers. So what is the difference? Cleaning, by definition, is going to be the removal of soil. It's getting the dirt out of the building, taking care of the impurities, removing them, and leaving a clean surface. Sanitizing, by definition, is going to be reducing the number of germs on a surface to meet health standards. Typically, we hear more about sanitizing when we're talking about food service. Disinfecting kills virtually, when done correctly, virtually kills all germs, achieving 100% of efficacy for what we are targeting and trying to kill. Sterilization, again, is a term that is usually gonna be more healthcare, but that is literally eradication of all living matter that is going to be on a surface or on a utensil. So it's important that we understand the difference. I often get asked if cleaning, you know, disinfects. Disinfecting by nature is the process of killing microorganisms using a chemical or some other method. Cleaning does help with disinfectant by removing microorganisms and wiping them away off a surface, but you cannot call it disinfecting. What are microbes? For the purpose of this webinar, we're going to define microbes as germs, unwanted bacteria, fungi, molds, viruses. Uh, all microbes can have a detrimental impact on health, and it's important that we are cleaning for health and safety to remove these from our buildings whenever possible. Interesting stat, and I think this is a great slide. It's actually rather shocking. Under ideal conditions, microbes and germs can double every 20 minutes. Definition of ideal conditions could be uh, absence of light, could be uh, temperature, could be dampness of the facility. Um, not getting cleaned, obviously, um, you know, helps with that condition too. But um, one germ within 12 hours can multiply to 68 trillion germs. That's a big number. Um, take a lot of microfiber towels to get rid of 68 trillion germs, but an interesting statistic. Something else that needs to be discussed when we're talking about cleaning our buildings is um, employee absenteeism. A study done uh, several years ago um, in the UK suggested that a Employ employers are losing um, $869 per year just due to sickness. 
that equates over to an average employee missing anywhere from three and a half to four percent of their work year just due to being ill and that comes down to about seven or eight days a year and that's that's a lot of last time in the office i know that it, it affects everyone um it affects office workers uh people not answering the phones i know where we stand point from a distribution you know just losing a truck driver for the day and not being able to make deliveries just absences hurt businesses and they do hurt the bottom line so reducing absenteeism should be something that we are all striving for um asthma is a big part of that breathing issues it seems especially this time of year i'm up north i'm in you know northern ohio uh, our buildings right now because of the cold are very dry it seems like when we do get sick when we are ill you know sore throat runny nose you know this weather doesn't help the, the dryness of the buildings doesn't help so keeping them clean so we're not breathing in those contaminants you know is going to help reduce absenteeism uh, impact on schools i know again here in ohio our schools are funded through um through the state by having what they say they call it the kids in the seats uh, they do censuses of the buildings they count how many kids are on the buses how many kids are in the classroom and the schools get funded by that um i, I was doing a some work with a business manager of a local school district look recently and he stated that if I if I asked him to put a number to it, that his school district lost six million dollars a year just to absenteeism in state funding. Uh, for a school district, depending on the size, six million dollars can be a, a, a lot of money and uh, and solve a lot of problems. So um, targeting the root of work related illness and symptoms. Again, it comes down to cleaning. It comes down to having a great cleaning program, having your SOPs ready and having staff that's trained so they understand what they're doing when they walk in a room and the difference between cleaning and disinfecting and what we need to do when we're there. Productivity is another one. When employees do not feel well, guess what? Um, they probably are a little slower at work. Um, poor indoor air quality can lead to a $2,000 loss per employee in, in functionality, which amounts to $250 billion a year for the workforce. Um, another thing with indoor air quality is equal friendly products or sustainability and having products that don't affect, you know, people at work. It's very important. Customer satisfaction, again, um, restaurants, healthcare. Um, QSR surveys said that cleanliness outranks 15 other important customer service criteria. People are coming in, they're judging us by how our buildings are clean, what do the restrooms look like when you're going into a retail store? Is, is it clean? 94% of adults would steer clear of businesses with unclean restrooms. And believe me, I have been there. Um, how do we measure cleanliness? Uh, many ways to do it. I test is probably the most, you know, the one that comes up the most. You walk in the building, you see dirty floors, you see a dirty restroom when you visit it. Uh, ATP detection, if you're not familiar with this, it's the little monitor there to the right with the swabs. And that measures ADP, which I believe is endensine triphosphate, which is DNA, and it, it measures dirt on a surface or tells you how much matter or DNA is on that surface. Um, another way to measure is showcasing your standards. And that comes down to, you know, showing people how we clean and, and what we clean and how we go about it. And the last but not least, it is one of the simplest, and I love this one, is uh, the marker method. Uh, you know, sneaky little trick is going with a a fluorescent marker and mark the back of a toilet or mark a desk and go back the next day with a black light and see if that was you know if that was cleaned and if the contamination is uh is gone if that marker is gone um uh, glenn i am ready to turn it over to you if you are ready yes sir Well, good morning, everybody. I'm stoked to be able to like present to you today. We're going to kind of morph into a little bit of this chemistry of cleaning and just a little bit about me uh, in regards to a previous life. And I was a cleaner, custodian, janitor, whatever word we want to use, um, you know, earlier in my career. And I just have a passion for our industry. And I think the fact that you're here today as well shows that you have a passion for our industry as you know, just as much as I do. So I'm I'm really anxious to share what we're going to be talking about here in regards to the chemistry of cleaning. Um, because, you know, what's most fun to me is we get a chance to play in dirt. 
right? I mean, it, you might think it's kind of funny to say that, but you know, that's what we deal with, right? We're dealing with dirt. And as we're thinking about how to clean, it becomes so important to be able to, to know what it is that we're trying to clean. So what kind of soil, dry, sticky, you know, things like, you know, beverages, coffee, body fluids, you know, the dry side with debris, just so important that we know what we're tackling. Um, another key thing for us to think through is, you know, chemical safety, because we're going to be talking about chemicals here. And it's just so important for us to understand that we should not be, and please don't be an armchair chemist. You know, don't mix chemicals. Don't think, well, if I just took a little bit of this glass cleaner and I mixed it with this kind of stuff that smells a little bit better, that I can be good with this chemical and it works better. It's dangerous. Please don't do that. Don't be that armchair chemist. And as I'm talking to you, I, I always, as I train and present, I'm always saying like, you're going to pull one or two things out of our time together today. And, and I just hope and pray that you literally pull a couple of key things out of the presentation. This being one of them, it's important because you could hurt yourself and you can hurt others. When it comes to cleaning, there's like four key attributes and it's important to memorize this. Um, and it's the word tact. And when it comes to cleaning, you have to have kind of all four of them in your in your back pocket. I need to either have time, agitation, concentration, or temperature. And it's what's interesting is when we clean, you know, agitation is nothing much more than you or me using a, a, a scrubbing pad, right? Or human elbow power. Um, time is just like letting my chemical work and spending time on it. You know, the concentration literally comes down to like the chemical that we're using and how it's mixed. And then this whole concept of temperature of like hot water, cold water, what works, you know, hot water for carpet, cold water for everything else, you know, understanding that these four characteristics when it comes to cleaning really help, you know, understand. Because if I'm missing some time, it's going to take some more elbow strength, right? If I can't let that chemical dwell, I'm going to have to scrub it and just think about soaking your dishes in your sink. Different types of cleaners that we utilize, right? And it's important to know that in this world of chemistry of cleaning, important to know what kind of chem chemical that I'm using. And is this product neutral? Is it a degreaser? Is it a soap scum remover? What's the difference? And it's gonna we're gonna tap into that because that's really all about pH or the makeup of a chemical. Is it an acid? Is it an alkaline? We'll come around to that. There are some key ingredients that are made and put into chemicals. Uh, solvents basically just kind of dissolve. Um, chelation, chelating agents, great word. If you remember that one, you're going to pass all the tests coming up because you know there's a test coming up. But chelating agents basically kind of help neutralize chemical in the presence of hard water. And then wetting um, surfactants is another key ingredient or a key function of a chemical. And surfactants, the best picture I can give you about a surfactant is this. Picture you've got yourself a spray bottle of just water, and in the other hand, you've got a spray bottle of, of glass cleaner. And in front of you, you've got a cardboard box, and you spray that box with water. And what will happen is the water is just going to run right down the side of that cardboard box. If you spray that box with glass cleaner, those surfactants, wetting agents, are going to let that chemical penetrate. Hence, that's the importance of surfactants. So key things to know, solvents, chelating agents, and wetting agents. Also, here's some, a few other things to think about. You know, what does a chemical do? It emulsifies, it suspends, it, it kills, right? And it also, I love this word, saponification that's there, you know, as far as like breaking down fats. And uh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to pause for one minute and back out. I have to turn on my camera. Maybe, or you're just not going to see me. Sorry, y'all. You're just going to get my voice. Here we come to the key and piece of the entire puzzle. Bob and I frequently get asked, like, "Hey, what chemical should I use when it comes to cleaning?" Uh, and really, it comes down to that: knowing my soil, knowing what that soil is made of, and and then choosing the proper chemical to change that over. And that is nothing more than just knowing, like, what is my soil so classic example rust rust 
is actually an alkaline soil and it takes an acid to clean rust and just think that through. That's why we have acid blow cleaners that attack that. Coca-Cola, if you want to use a great story about just, you know, what an acid does is Coca-Cola is an acidic product. You've heard stories of grandpa, you know, telling you to uh, pour some Coke on that rusty bolt and let it soak. Um, and the way we go with that. So, you know, knowing this is a key part. Bob and I get these questions all the time. You know, somebody calls me up and says, I have, you know, glue in my carpet. Well, what do I need to do? I got to find the soil of glue, choose the correct product. So knowing your pH scale and going back to the chemistry of what we learned in high school, which by the way, I hated chemistry class, but hey, it's what it is. Uh, so just understand pH. This is the secret sauce to being an effective cleaner. And you need to know your chemicals. You know, what are the, what's the pH of the chemicals that you use every single day? And you wanna train your people on how to use those. Cleaner basics, simple things like just, you know, in hard water, what takes away hard water? It's gonna be acids, you know, hard water, alkaline. Think about a drinking fountain and stainless steel. You see those little white mineral deposits, alkaline soil, gonna use an acid to clean that and so forth. Same way it just continues to work right on down the, down the path. You know, degreasers, food soils tend to be acidic or are acidic, and so we use a hot alkaline degreaser. Uh, it's important to use that time, agitation, chemical, and temperature uh, tact acronym as well. Key piece of the puzzle as you're thinking through, like how do I handle chemicals and chemical safety is knowing how to mix it. Uh, and so as you think this through, my here's my directions and thoughts on this one. Please, 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 please. Follow the instructions on the label. You know, in this example here, we have a, a, a chemical rate or a ratio of one to four. And that means one part chemical to four parts water. Extremely important. So in the case of if you're mixing stuff up in a mop bucket and the chemical calls for one to four, you're going to add one gallon of chemical, four gallons of water for a total of five gallons of solution. Little exercise, we're gonna skip over that one. Cleaning energy types, you know, this kind of goes back to like what I was talking about in the tact piece of things, right? So you've got these different ways of cleaning. You know, is, is you, me, chemical, the mechanical scrubbing or a machine that scrubs for you and thermal is nothing more than using hot, cold water. The ABCs of cleaning, Super important, like we were talking about, you have to know your soil type, so you have to analyze your soil. You got to bring the right tools. So there's your B, C, clean with your best practice, or your best practices, which means following directions and follow the training that you've been given out there. You know, people do teach this. We teach this. We come into your place and help you learn. Continue some, continuing on with some best practices. Um, you know, dry dirt. A lot easier to clean than mud, correct? So just knowing that it's so much easier to move, remove that kind of a soil. Um, and when cleaning dry soil, uh, it's important to kind of work from top to bottom, think dusting. But yet when we're doing it the opposite way, um, you know, you want to think about like, how do I work my way from the bottom up? So spraying down like a locker room wall, a shower room in a locker room, you're going to start applying your chemical from the bottom up. And then you're going to rinse top to bottom. Best practices, diluting with chemicals, please, you know, do, when you're diluting chemicals, wear your gloves, wear your goggles, follow all your safety procedures. It's so important. Training is provided. Your company has specific rules about what to do, but my, my feeling is always protect yourself. So wear your go goggles, wear your gloves, measure, you know, put your water in, then your cleaner, follow the directions. And then chemical dilution systems, you know, things that go onto the wall or are portable and mix the chemical for you and you don't have any type of way to actually interact with the chemical that concentrate yourself is a way to continue to save product or to, you know, to be safe. Cross-contamination, Bob kind of talked about that a little bit in his piece as well. And, uh, you know, just like a lot of times what we're working with is color coding these days, you know, red for the bathroom, blue for glass, using mops, using microfiber cloths that are color coded, uh, and then changing them and keeping them clean. Storage areas, nothing more than just kind of like, please, please, please be organized. You know, um, I mentioned that I was a cleaner early in my life and, uh, 
you know, and I think sometimes we as cleaners, we have these stereotypes that people put onto us. And at times we live up to those stereotypes, which is kind of sad. Uh, and one way to break those stereotypes is to choose to not be a stereotype. But the other one is to be like, I'm organized, I'm professional, I keep my space clean. And it's just so important to be able to remind yourself to do that constantly. Monitor your supplies, have product on hand, be, have that all available to you. And then just know that um, efforts broken down to these kinds of things. Um, there's different stages of cleaning. You know, one of them is to prevent. How do I prevent things getting dirty? And then uh, my preventative cleaning, my daily cleaning, my interim cleaning and the restorative. And that really comes into play a lot with everything we do, not just floor care. But that, that's uh, often heard of when we talk about like floor stripping and floor finish and removal of floor finish and you know, stripping wax. But you know we have to have a program put together um, for preventative, daily, interim, and restorative cleaning. Just a few more notes right there on some category breakdowns, and uh, we are ready to roll with some Q and A. So I'm going to back out and just kind of like bring this screen back a minute and uh, open things up, and then I can get back into my Teams meeting here. Thank you, Bob and Glenn. I think your presentation sparked a lot of questions. Um, the first one in here, does Imperial Day to offer any environmentally friendly cleaning products? Absolutely, uh, yes. Um, we are uh, tons of green certified products, buildings that are, are safe for the environment and leads. My recommendation would be uh, to get a hold of your sales rep and, and ask that question, but we can definitely help you with a, a, a green program or sustainability. It's all about reducing risk and we love getting involved in those situations. Awesome. So how would someone go about having a cleaning program set up? I, I love what Bob said earlier about, you know, reaching out to your consultant, your salesperson and uh, and, and sitting down with them and talking about how to prepare and create a program if you're not familiar with how to do that. You know, having the, the right kind of chemicals and the right tools available is just a matter of sitting down with someone and having a good consultative conversation and having someone help you do that if you're not quite sure how to do that. All right, there were a couple questions about diluting chemicals. Um, when diluting chemicals, do you recommend a chemical dilution system? or do you recommend diluting the chemicals yourself? A chemical dilution system is definitely going to make it easier for you because when you push the button, it's coming out dosed at the right proportion. Uh, so it, it's, an e it's an easy way to go and it, 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 takes the, it, takes, it makes it simple. It takes the thought out of it. They're not doing the math when they're standing there. They're not trying to figure out the ratio of, you know, what, what, what is one to eight. It does it for them. And Bob, you might want to you might want to uh, touch on the safety aspect of that also. That that there are some uh, chemicals that in the concentrated form might be a little, you know, a little different than in the diluted form. You know, as far as uh, personal protective equipment. Hey, absolutely, Jim. That's good. Um, nice point. Uh, yeah. So uh, the, the dilution control is obviously going to make it safer. Hopefully, it's you know it's a closed loop system. They're not touching the concentrated chemicals. There's no risk of glug glug. You know, I've seen a, a couple accidents over my years where someone was pouring stripper into a pail and were a little too aggressive with it and it splashed up and, you know, caught them, you know, and you definitely don't want to keep chemical off our body at all times, believe me. It's the stuff we're using today is a lot safer than the stuff we we used 30 years ago, but there's always going to be risks associated with with using chemicals. We had another comment uh, about pH levels. Um, someone is wondering if we could talk a little bit about the pH level of typical coffee, ink, pencil lead, beer, milk, urine, juice, things <laughs> like that. Just a few different categories there, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. Like, Bob, you want to take a few of them and I'll take a few of them? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the key here to me is always counteraction, right? Like, and, and there are, there's pH test strips you can grab the test stuff. I mean, you know, coffee is obviously going to be acidic. Uh, urine coming out of a human body is going to be alkaline, but but counteraction is, is the key is you want to use a cleaner on the opposite side of the pH spectrum. With, with the, the most important thing to me, and I tell a lot of my customers this, is understanding that 
that pH scale goes from one to 14, with one being your acid and 14 being your alkalines. pH uh, increases exponentially as you go. So a pH of eight is gonna be 10 times stronger than a pH of seven in alkalinity. Nine is gonna be 100 times stronger than an eight. So as you're going up or down that scale, you're, you're gonna be dealing with a more dangerous chemical or more dangerous product. So you wanna use the product that's gonna work on what you're trying to clean, that's gonna be as close to seven as, as you can, for the safety of the staff, if that makes sense. Uh, what else was in there? I heard urine, I heard coffee. What else was in there? It was ink was one of them, I know. Well, ink's mm -hmm. a tough one. There's all different kinds of inks. <laughs> um, if anybody else on this call beer. has an answer, I'd love to hear it. Ink is definitely one of those challenging ones that comes up frequently, uh, actually, and especially as, as ink hits carpet. Um, that one comes up often and it usually takes some kind of a solvent and there are times we cannot get ink out, right? Um, but it's going to take more likely some kind of a solvent to go after that. Um, I see uh, Barbara just threw a comment on there about ice melt residue and, and salt. Um, it's just that's right, right. We're dealing with, with right now, right? And that too is chemistry. But along with that piece of chemistry when it comes to salt is uh, I just always take people back to chemistry class that I had. My chemistry teacher had us, you know, fill up um, a beaker with water. And then basically we poured salt into that and we would stir it. And there's a spot, right, where water will not do it. it you know, it will not um, put salt into solution. And then the, the little dry salt kernels, uh, what do you call those things, stay at the bottom of, uh, of that beaker. And how important it is with salt. You want to use something acidic when you're mopping your floor, but you have to change your mop bucket frequently. If that salt will only, you know, that water will only keep salt in so much solution. And otherwise you're just mopping your floors with salt water, making things worse. So it's just really important to change your water. That's the thing I see that does not happen nearly often enough. And, you know, in an ideal world, if you have it, use an auto scrubber that will pick up all of that stuff versus, you know, using a mop. Um, there was one other one that popped up and I missed it as it went away. Bob, I don't know Acid if neutralizer that. can help boost that too. If, if you're having a problem, if you've got dry down salt, if it dried on the floor, can't be swept up, water's just not taking up stains, put a little bit of an acid neutralizer in it, in your bucket or your auto scrubber. And guys, I, I would also caution that we only use that on the days that we need to use it because we use that over a, a, a lengthy period of time, that acidic solution will actually start to attack the floor finish that we're trying to preserve sure so will. use it when you need it where you need it but it's not uh it's not a one size fits all for the entire facility necessarily true the comment was in the chat about um hairspray working on ink and it makes sense because it's you know a solvent type of product which is kind of ironic that we sprayed on our head well some of us might spray it on our head but it's all good cool uh, was were there any other questions? Built. If there weren't any other questions, I'm going to pull the actual the presentation back up because there's a couple of final slides that we would like to cover, um, but we'd be happy to stay here on camera for a minute if there's a couple extra questions. All right, we'll give it a share. Okay. Thanks to uh, our presenters, Glenn and Bob Tay. Big thank you. Um, and especially our sponsors, again, Gojo and, and Purell. Um, outstanding work and super helpful information that we can all use every day. And as they say, knowledge is power. And I hope today's presentation provided just that. Our next segment is scheduled for February 21st and will feature West Floor. He's the equipment specialist located in the central Northwest region. Wes will be providing excellent ideas on how to build an equipment maintenance program and tips to keep your equipment running in peak condition. For those of you over 40, I'm not dating myself, but um, you may remember the effective uh, commercial from Fram Oil and it had a uh, tagline that said, you can pay me now or pay him later. And him was referring to an auto mechanic uh, and it emphasized the point of proper maintenance and that will pay great dividends on your equipment investment. And so in other words, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So thank you again for attending and please spread the word when the email invite for Wes's presentation 
uh, arrives to you uh, for February 21st. And registration is now open at DalcoOnline.com and look for the value of clean banner on the homepage or on the event page as well. So thank you once again for everyone and uh, we appreciate your time. There, any other questions? Caitlin? I don't see any other questions in the chat. Also, thank you to our sponsors for putting this on. Um, I think this went great. Thank Good. you, Bob and Glenn, Frank, Jim, all of our presenters. Thank you, Caitlin and Barbara for putting this on. So appreciate it. Thanks everybody. Yep. Look forward to seeing everyone next month. Thanks. Take care. All right. Bob, I'm not sure if those two are still on or they just stepped away from their computer, but uh, nice job. Thank you, sir. A little nervous. Um, you know, I, I have my own way of preparing and having gotten that deck a little earlier may have helped. They did change <laughs> some things up, as you saw, so. Yeah. yeah, it's always a little unnerving. Plus, you know, just being there by yourself, it's much easier, I think, when you've got a room full of people because <laughs> Then you can know if it's if it if you're connecting or not. But yeah. yeah, I work off feedback really well when I'm in front of people, and I love telling stories and anecdotes, and you know, pulling from their experiences. So yeah, just uh, trying not to read from a slide and make something that's common sense sound impressive was. Uh, so I was working on it last night, and I was here at six this morning, just uh, going through it, seeing what anything else clever I can come up with. Yeah. Uh, but I, again, I think nice job had, uh, you know, I didn't see people dropping off or anything. They actually went up a little bit at the beginning and then it just stayed level. Mm -hmm. So a That's lot of important. times you see a number at the beginning and it just starts tailing off shortly thereafter. But uh, uh, but I, I think it hit the mark. We'll see. I don't know if I get invited back or not, but hey, <laughs> it's all well, good. <laughs> I, I thought the content was good. Um, so, you know, it's really what, what drives it. So, yeah. But yeah, hey, thank funny. you for all your help. You were a big part of it. So okay. no, my pleasure. I, I didn't do that much, at least not today. So but it hey, your, it was your yeah. pre-work for that that deck that really helped us, you know, yeah. add well, to it. I'm I'm glad we got it out there. And you know, that's that's why it's there for us to use 
just like you guys did. So right. again, nice job and uh, sure we'll be talking soon. Are you over the Eagles loss? Have you made it? You know, I didn't feel real warm and fuzzy going into that game. And yeah, it's, you know, it's disappointing, but it's you know not overly surprising, unfortunately. So we'll see, you know, they got pieces to pick up and we'll see how it all shakes out. You know, it's, it's going to be a whole new team next year. So we'll see. We're, we're kindred uh, and spirits here new... because my, my Browns found a new way to disappoint me this year. So <laughs> it never seems to fail. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll we'll see how it plays out. Looks like Kelsey's going to hang it up, but it's funny now. He's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, you know, so soon after the game. But he's already having second thoughts. But I think his wife's going to work on him to hang it up. You know, there's a guy he'll never have to buy another beer in Philadelphia. That's for sure. So yeah, he has certainly endeared himself to this town. So eh, you know, it is what it is. We weren't, you know, I I was. I was a little leery, you know, when they were starting out and they had a great record, but they didn't, you know, they didn't really put anybody away, you know, when they were working towards 10 to 10 and one. So I don't know. We'll see. But it's, it's funny watching other games and watching quarterbacks throw the ball right to their, their guy and he catches it. It's like, wow, is that how it's supposed to be? <laughs> I just, I haven't seen a lot of you know, real strong accuracy. So. We shall see. And, and then we'll get the rest of the story. You know, what was going on in the locker room and all that mess. That'll be coming out, I'm sure. So uh, the the right. saga continues here in Philly. <laughs> Same in Cleveland. All right. Like I said, thank right, you so, again. I thought well, this went together pleasure. well. This marketing team is pretty sharp. So there they are. It, yeah. Barbara gets after it. So there's no yeah. two ways about that. So good. But, hey, hopefully we do more of these and continue to spread the word. Happy to be included. Thanks. Well, thank you. Take care. Right. See you. Talk soon. Bye now.